Brevity, Brigadier General John Corson Smith. Brevity, Brigadier General, Politician, and Freemason John Corson Smith. I was 22 years old when I came to Galena in 1854. There I established a construction business. I built buildings there that include the Methodist Church, the Galena Post Office, and the Dubuque Customs House that I built with my friend and engineer, Ely Parker. At the recommendation of Brother Parker, I joined the Galena Miners Lodge. It is then I embarked on a journey with Freemasonry I would never abandon. Soon I made acquaintance with the Grant family and many of these distinguished men here tonight. Upon the country's call for volunteers, I enlisted into Company I of the Illinois 96th Infantry. We left Rockford's Camp Fuller in October 62, and we would go on to fight in the most important battles in the Western Theater. I fought at the battles of Chickamauga, Lookout Mountain, Missionary Ridge, Rasaka, and Kennesaw Mountain, where I was severely wounded in the shoulder source of lasting pain for the rest of my life. The Battle of Chickamauga was one of the bloodiest of the entire war, second only to Gettysburg, resulting in almost 35,000 men killed or wounded. That night I wrote to my wife, uncertain if I would see her and my children again. Today it offers great insight to the gruesomeness of that war. I would like to read an excerpt from that letter. September 20, 1863, Rossville, Georgia, Sunday night, 10 p.m. Dear wife, we have fought one of the severest battles of the war. We moved out this morning on the Ringgold Road, soon found the enemy in force on our right. General Speedman and staff in advance. We ran into the enemy and were heavily engaged. The 96 taking the right of the front line and moved up to a rebel battery. We fought them two hours and drove them, but at a terrible loss. They massed again and attacked us. We fought them until dark when we ran out of ammunition. The 96 took in 500 men and came out with 50. Our division lost at least 1,200 men. Colonel Clark, I fear, will not live. He has a ball through his right arm. Ed's brother is killed. I saw Brother Tom in the fight, but I can't find him. I am under. Colonel Champion is safe, but had a horse killed. So had General Steedman. Bean is killed. Quinn, badly wounded. Lewis and Vincent, wounded, but not dangerous. Many of our boys are left on the field. I fear we shall have it as warm tomorrow. God grant that I may pass through safe as I have done today. If Burnside comes up with forces from Grant, we may turn the tide and end this war in the Southwest. But if we lose, we shall have to fight them again. I trust, dear Lonnie, that I may never see such fighting again. Our Corps and General Thomas's fought 100,000 rebels today. Many of our Galena boys are no more. I must now close with love to you and the boys. Kiss them for me and give them a father and may God protect them. Tell them to love their father's memory if he should fall, and love the flag he has fought for and under which he may die. God bless you, my wife. A sweet kiss to you in the voice. Love every one of the 96, for they have done noble. 
No regiment on the field have done better. They are worthy of old Joe Davies. Once more, God bless you, and may I live to see you again and enjoy the blessings of peace. Ever your own husband, John. I ended up finding my brother Tom, however not alive. I lost another brother in the war too, as many did. I also lost a son to disease on the home front. My wife and family joined the division in Nashville. They assisted in the fight. My wife's nurturing tendencies earned her the nickname the Mother of the 96. After securing a Union victory, I was brevetted Brigadier General for meritorious service. I returned to Galena, where I secured a position with the IRS, served as County Tax Assessor until 1874. In 1873, I received the 32nd degree of the Scottish Rite at the Freeport Masonic Lodge. In 1874, I was hired to manage the Blossoming Chicago Board of Trade. In 1878, I moved to politics. I was elected state treasurer of the state of Illinois. I ran again in 1882. I was elected state treasurer of the state of Illinois in 1878. I ran again and won in 1882. It was then $15,000 went missing from the state's treasury. Unable to balance the state's budget, I personally paid this amount back to the citizens, never allowing for reimbursement. In 1885, I won a ticket for lieutenant governor and served another four-year term. In 1888, an article appeared in the Freeport Journal Standard declaring that I was the frontrunner for the governor's position, a position in which I declined. Rather, I went to a semi-state of retirement. Now, General Grant had asked me to tell my favorite war story. He's a little obsessed with them, actually. Now, mine is odd because it occurred at this time, the late 1870s, 24 years after the end of the war. I was at a Masonic event in Tennessee, and I was overhearing a conversation by Colonel George Connor. Now, Mr. Connor was a colonel in an infantry in Tennessee for the Confederate Army, and he was a good man. And he was speaking about an instance at the Battle of Rosaka, where he watched a Union artillery battery move up and down and side by side the battle line with beautiful grace. He watched phony ambushes at the front of the line to draw the troops in only to pull back. Ten shots were fired from areas where there were no men. He went on to say it was the most beautiful display of organization he had ever seen, and he had always longed to meet the man responsible. I excused myself from my conversation and turned around and said, Colonel Connor, I have been listening to your conversation most attentively. I extended my hand and said, you have met that man. Now, I certainly had uh, Mr. Connor's attention for the rest of the night. <laughs> now, in my retirement, I stayed very busy. I focused on my Masonic life, writing, traveling, and assisting many organizations that called for my aid. I helped bring the World's Fair to Chicago in 1893, considered by some to be the most important exposition ever held. I published two books on Freemasonry, as well as my own personal recollections of General Grant and General Logan. I also wrote my travels in my 1895 book, 
around the world with General John Orson Smith. The upper level of my Chicago home, known as Smith's Inn, was the meeting spot for the 96th Infantry reunions, as well as for the Illinois Masonic Lodge. My public oration skills remained in demand through the rest of my life. Highlights include unveiling statues to honor General Logan, Logan Square, Chicago, and to General Speedman, Toledo, Ohio. In the months before my death, I completed a lifelong goal, finishing the Treaty of Amity, a binding pact known as the Concordat of Knights Templars which united all English-speaking Masonic bodies. It was signed December 1910. I expired and was called to a higher God weeks later on New Year's Eve. Many thought I would be prominently buried in Chicago or Springfield. Instead, I requested that I be returned to the ancient city I always considered home, Galena. Now, newspapers around the country reported my death, albeit a bit confused. I was a builder and a general. Or was I a politician and a freeman? It is only me to blame. Perhaps the Chicago Tribune published the most complete report, and in my humbleness, I wish to read excerpts from that before bidding you a good night. <coughs> January 6, 1911, Chicago Daily Tribune. The bells were chiming out their requiem to the old year and ringing a welcome to the new on December 31st. The echoes dying away with the glad accompaniment of the departed soul of friend, brother, and comrade, John Thorson Smith. Night had yielded to the coming morning the spirit of this gentle and brave companion, which was severed from body and received its welcome on the other shore. Born February 13, 1832, and reaching almost four score years, no man was ever more beloved nor held in higher esteem than he. He loved his fellow man, and all who knew him loved him. Coming to Illinois in 1854, he located at Galena. In 1874, he made Chicago his home. By trade, he was a contracting carpenter and forsook that to become a noted soldier, politician, and enthusiast in fraternal organizations. General Smith was of Scotch-English parentage. His younger years were spent in the cotton mills at Philadelphia, and at the age of 16, he was apprenticed to a carpenter and builder. As a master builder, he erected several buildings in Galena and Chicago. He was superintendent of construction in the erection of the U.S. Customs House at Dubuque, Iowa, among other federal structures. It is a virtually assured fact that no man was ever more honored by membership in military, civic, and fraternal organizations than John Corson Smith. During his political career, he personally had as large of an acquaintance with the people of Illinois as any man. In 1862, when the war cloud hung like a nemesis over the land and shrieks of shot and shell were equaled only by the rebel yell, he left his happy home and enlisted as a private. Through gallantry, and meritorious service, he rose to the rank of general. General Smith was past commander of the U.S. Grant Post Number 28, 
the Grand Army Republic of Chicago, served as commander of the Illinois Grand Army Republic and the Military Order of the United States Commander. General Smith was Grand Master of Odd Fellows of Illinois and for many years held responsible offices in that organization. In fraternal associations, the one most to his liking was Masonic, inaugurated into its mysteries May 21, 1859, he devoted much time, energy, and ability to Masonic advancement. Henceforward, he became the foremost persistent and energetic workers in Masonic circles on the globe. Having become affiliated with every branch of the Masonic fraternity on earth, and by active and honorary membership, held offices and positions of trust, and with confidence, his name was enrolled upon the rosters of the bodies, grand and subordinate of each and every degree. His name today remains alone as the most distinguished frater of the globe. His membership extended throughout the Western continent in England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, the British possessions of the East, Greece, Syria, Jerusalem, Egypt, the West Indies, and the island of Jamaica, among others. Few, if any, Freemasons have been so greatly honored with Masonic affiliation as has General Smith. He was doubtless the greatest traveler and best known Mason in the world. Passed to his rest December 31st. On January 2nd, private services were held at his home by Bishop Vincent. Following which, the Masonic bodies took his remains in charge and they lay in state under watch until the afternoon of the succeeding day at Medina Temple. Thousands passed his casket with tributes of love. The Knights Templar's beautiful services were most impressively conducted by St. Bernard Commander. Following this, the remains were escorted by his Masonic brothers to Galena. They laid the rest in the family lot in a quiet cemetery. His widow, one daughter, and three sons survived him. His life is his mind.